another wild camping experience and in this video I'm going to be trying not to poison myself or Laurie with salmonella or E. coli as I try to cook up Coco Van. Hi folks, welcome. We're out on a wild camp on the River Bure. It's myself and Laurie. We're both out in the nightcap flat hammocks tonight. So this is mine. I've decided to put an extra tarp over the top because of this dreadfully inclement weather. Raining the whole day, basically, on and off. Although tomorrow's forecast is looking a bit better and Laurie's decided to just go with the straightforward fly. So I believe this is the first time that Laurie's been out in the hammock, so it'll be interesting to see how he gets on. This is only my second night, so again, it was still a learning process. We've decided, because the weather is so wet, to set up a camp over here for cooking. Both come out in our wooden canoes, both got the same flat hammocks. Could we like Tweedledee and Tweedledum. Obviously I'm the dumb one. Laurie and I had arranged this hammock wild camp trip irrespective of the weather and we were committed regardless of the rain. The trip began earlier that day, setting off in a downpour from the launch point at Roxham. <laughs> Oh my god, and that's before we've even started. <laughs> the launch point at Roxham is ideal with plenty of parking. Another wet adventure. We were planning on a short canoe before establishing camp on the River Bure. So Laurie's decided to come out with a kayak style paddle. And we'll see how he gets on with that. The twin-ended kayak paddle proved effective and Laurie was soon ahead of me and establishing quite a lead. Underneath the Roxham Bridge. The single arch bridge over the Bure was built in 1619. The bridge effectively splits the two villages of Hoverton and Roxham, although many people refer to the whole settlement as Roxham. There's also a modern day footbridge immediately adjacent east, but with only 7 foot 3 or 2 meters 20 headroom at average high water, there's not a lot of clearance. It wasn't long before we'd left Roxham Boatyard behind us and we entered the world of the Norfolk Broads. Say something profound. Something profound. <laughs> Profound, that's something profound. No, it is, it's very magical. It okay. is. Incredible. That's what happened earlier and how we found our wild camp spot. Laurie's first challenge was to set the fire pit. We'll start going, hopefully. Oh, that's smoky. That is a proper smoky Joe. It will stop smoking once they get hot enough. <coughs> right, we need the fire going for the hot ashes because I'm going to be using a Dutch oven, which I've never done before. So every day is a school day and every day is a chance to learn something new. So that's the reason why I hope I don't end up giving everybody food poisoning. But before the delicacies of this evening's meal, let's have a look at these hammocks. Hi Laurie, so um, do you want to go ahead and show us what you've got inside? No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, go on. We've got two Nightcat lay flat hammocks, not to be confused with Nightcat's other hammock, which is a banana star hammock. And these can also be used as a bivy tent on the ground. What have I got in mind? And in the square window, what do we have? 
The only reason Andrew's asked me to do this is so my tent gets wet on the inside. See, that's the reason why I've got the extra tarp, you see. <laughs> Aha! Ta-da! Open sesame. The inner mosquito mesh is open. Open back. Yep. And tonight, da -da -da, I shall be sleeping on... Um, wow. I've even forgot what make it is, but it's a... Here we are. A Kilos gear inflatable mat, which has an R value of about two, so nothing special. Um, British Army three-season sleeping bag, part of their modular system, and I'm also trying out, because it's supposed to be cold tonight, this is Snug Pack's jungle blanket, which can go over the top if that's not warm enough. So I should be snug as a bug. Excellent. One of the joys of these is, apart from keeping you flat, uh, which intrigued me because I don't like banana hammocks, is also underneath here is a storage cargo shelf where you can put rucksacks, dead ducks, the odd boat, whatever it is you want to stow in there. You can keep it in there and it keeps nice and dry and you can access it. So that's mine. What is in the round window? I don't know. <laughs> Excellent, thank you, thank you very much. Here's mine. I just think that having the extra tarp is a good idea because on days like this, when it's absolutely tipping it down, if you've got this cover to be able to erect or dismantle the hammock, like so tomorrow morning if it is still raining, at least you've got a little bit of cover. Right, let me walk you around and show you inside my hammock. First thing to mention are these barrels that we've been using. They are perfect as a bedside table, perfect height. Inside here then, let's have a quick look. There's my ProLite Plus Thermarest. That is a self-inflating mat with an R factor of about nine or something like that. It's my four season sleeping bag. That's my poly cotton sleeping bag liner. And this is an inflatable trekology pillow. So it should be pretty comfortable tonight. When I'm out with Laurie, have to indulge myself. A small bottle very close to. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sounds good. I think you better at least fill it up. <laughs> Cheers. Good help. Let's hope it turns out better than Lawrence's chicken. Quick Indian samosa. Just keep the wall from the door. I don't know about quick. I mean, do you want to try it now before it gets smoked out? Yeah. You've got to dribble some sauce on it. Do you want it on your plate? No. Red hot chili sauce. Not red hot, but carrot, carrot sauce. sauce. Carrot sauce. A bit like those chump steaks. Mm. <laughs> this is my Dutch oven and it weighs an absolute ton. It's made from cast iron. Ugh. This is the base of it. This is the lid. The lid also doubles up as a frying pan. It's got these little legs on it there you might be able to see. It's basically a cast iron skillet. It's got three legs. And if you look here, there's a little nick there. Hopefully you can see that. And that is where the lid will close and allows a little bit of steam to come out. A bit of an embarrassment because I've owned this since 2018 and I've never used it. So this is the first time. So it's gonna be a learning experience. There's the skillet. Let's put it on there. So we're just using some regular coal. I've got the ingredients in this box here. I've got carrots, garlic, stock cube, salt and pepper. God, it's like Jamie Oliver outdoors, isn't it? And we've got some nice shallots. And there's some of these bacon lardons as well. So the first thing to do is try and get some oil in here. And I'm going to fry 
one of these off. Lard arms in. Right, they're going in. Great, thanks. I'll do your swap for some rubbish. Thank you. Okay, here's the chicken from my butcher. These are just four chicken thighs. Some more rubbish. Thank you. Give me a rubbish in boss. Thank you. Let's fry those off. Okay. A bit of salt and pepper. Put some garlic here. Just going to chop that up on the top of this. Now these skillets are kind of a traditional cooking utensil for people to go canoeing because they're so versatile. You can actually even bake bread in these, so I'm led to believe. So you can make stews, all sorts of cuisine inside the pot, and then you can use the lid as a frying pan to make flat breads, or of course fry egg or bacon on them. So after this has been fried off, just to brown it a little bit, get the cooking going. I'm going to add a stock cube and then this. Uh, I thought that this was a good choice of wine because it's got a picture of a bicycle on it. So it's combining my two loves, which are canoeing and biking. And of course, actually my third love, which is eating. So I'm gonna throw that in. I'm going to add a stock cube. I think it's a little boat. Wondering who that mad couple of old men are cooking on the riverbank. It goes in. And then finally the carrots, which were all prepared at home. <laughs> that is allegedly as simple as that. And then I'm going to cook that for about an hour and then just before we eat it, I'm going to add some of these chestnut baby mushrooms. And now, trying to find that little nick to go up there. There is a little arrow. Put the lid on and we'll come back in one hour. cooks it reduces so it's really important to check regularly in case you need to add more liquid. One hour later. After an hour it's time to add the chestnut mushrooms. These only need about 12 minutes to soften.
actually going, isn't it? So, wow. Take that off. Oh. That is looking pretty successful, but of course the proof is in the eating. So there you are, a simple chicken stew that the French like to call coco van. Uh, well actually, we all like to call it coco van. The rain eventually subsided and we woke to a dry, sunny and bright morning. I always find that this is a special moment in the day, waking up in nature. Look at that beautiful sunrise. Laurie was preparing breakfast with sausages on the go. Morning Laurie. Just so people understand, that's a two burner stove. It's Richard Outdoors custom made things and you can either use twigs or alcohol burners in them. Extremely adaptable, versatile little stove. How did you sleep? Surprisingly well as a first time hammocker. So, did it feel flat? Surprisingly so, surprisingly yeah. so. And what about warmth? I was in fact too warm um, like with my setup initially yeah. last night, bearing in mind how cold it was. Yeah. Um, more than comfortable, very comfortable. I can't, you know, fault it on that at all. Now, were there any issues at all? Because I heard a bit of a thump in the middle of the night. <laughs> You're a cruel man. Um, being a gentleman of a certain age, I needed to vacate the tent at three o'clock and um, gravity helped me out, how shall we put it that way? <laughs> <laughs> uh, and so, it's been quite muddy there, but I did yeah. put um, a footprint, if you like, so I didn't get too muddy going out, but um, yeah, there was a slight earthquake. But all in all, then, a pretty pretty good tent. They were. It's they worked good. surprisingly yeah. well, because I'm very anti-hammocking before I use that, and there's definitely a place for them, and that was last night, because this site is so wet. Thank you. That's it, completes another wild camp. Apart from falling out of the hammock <laughs> being the only injury, neither of us are suffering from food poisoning, so that's a bonus. Always leave no trace. <laughs>